Well, today is going to be new machine day for me. And when I say new, I mean new. It's going to be a brand new machine. We've got the, uh, I just moved the camper over in front of the house, get it out of the way, because we got a big box truck that's going to be coming here in about 20 minutes or so to unload it. And the new machine today is going to be a brand new Heidenmech bandsaw. I have been wanting one of these Heidenmech saws or a, or a mitering bandsaw for several years now. Want, been wanting to replace the old do all over there and have something that's a little bit more compact and more convenient to use here in the shop that you can easily uh, use to cut angles without a bunch of fuss. And that's how these Heidenmechs are. My buddy Joe down at the welding shop, they've had one of these Heidenmechs for probably 20 years or more. And a few years ago, he actually bought another one. So he's got two of them down there now. And he's always had great luck with them. I've used it up several times down there. Always liked this saw. So that's what I picked. I'm looking forward to uh, moving the do-all out of here. Uh, hopefully sell that off to somebody else that can use it and put the new hide mac in there. So I'm, I'm excited about today. And uh, the guy should be showing up here pretty soon. So let me take you back here. We'll take a peek at the, uh, the do-all real quick which is uh what we're going to be replacing so here's the this is the do all c4 and it's still a good saw uh, whoever owned it in its earlier years did some modifications to it they uh you know the the coolant the original coolant pan and pump and everything that came with it was missing so i've just been using a bucket all this time with the pump sitting down there in it i do know that the um I'm pretty sure all these carbide uh, guides right here are going to need to be replaced. It never really cut straight. But uh, I'm hoping that the uh, the new hide mac is going to be a little bit more compact in this area right here. And again, make it nice and easy so that whenever I need to cut an angle on something, I can just turn this thing and cut it and be done with it. That's one of the advantages of the, uh, the mitering bandsaw. So... I'll have the camera in my pocket, so whenever he shows up, we'll get a little footage of the unload, all right? That looks like the new saw there. And there it is. It's a nice saw. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to get it hooked up and using it, man. Place that old one I got. There it is. Yep. Yep, that'll work. That's all right. That'll work right there. Good right here? Yes, sir. All right, we've got a successful delivery of the new Heidmech saw. Let's take a look at it and make sure. I did it once over. I don't see any damage to the uh, crate or the saw or anything. There's this one spot right here with an air fitting sticking up and the plastic uh, poked through the plastic right there. This should. This is probably going to be for the uh, mist coolant that they attached to it right there. But that looks fine, and that's attached to the base there as well. So that's going to be the stand. We're going to have to get it on the stand, but everything's looking pretty good. I don't see any damage, so looks like we're ready to go. You want to be on this too? It's beautiful. It's it is. Big. Not that I was expecting it not to be big, but... Yeah, it's definitely a little bit bigger than what you expect when it when it comes on the crate like this yeah. the crate makes it look pretty big it's but awesome but the uh we got to get it that's the base for it there so we have to pick it up and get it on the base are you going to teach me how to use it absolutely gotta have somebody out here helping me cut stuff up i 
I'd be happy to. All right. So my plan of attack, because the uh, saw is not mounted to the base, I, I wasn't expecting that. And I didn't even think about that whenever I was talking to him about the saw. Uh, but that's no problem. But I think what we're gonna do, I think I'm gonna go ahead and move the Smith & Mills out, outside out of the way. That way I can bring the saw in here and I can use my uh, gantry crane here to safely pick up the saw and not have any kind of problems. That's my hope anyway. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So I'm like right in the middle of working on the uh, Stoker engine right here, but that's okay. I need to go ahead and get this taken care of. So uh, that's my current job in line is to deal with this right here. Once you get a little leverage on it, it moves pretty easy. Just like that. I can tell that it's definitely easier on this concrete versus my old concrete in there. Once you get that thing, once you get the caster swiveled, it moves pretty easy. So you see me push it there. I think that's gonna work right there. Got to go get me a, a larger tarp, but I've got this one on hand. It'll work for now. Use this stuff right here, the SP400 from CRC. Whenever you're leaving something like a machine tool outside in the elements, you know, even covered up, it'll, you know, it's going to rust, especially in Florida. But this stuff right here, it, it creates a waxy surface on the bare metal and will not allow the moisture to build up on the, on the metal surfaces there. So I'm just taking, I'm just coating all this down because we have, uh, there's rain coming through today and uh, it might get rained on. This will just help protect the better, bare metal surfaces here. Uh, until I get a bigger tarp later on. All right, let's get her uncrated. Here's our first look of the saw with the crate out of the way here. I was uh, looking for some bolts. Here we go. I believe these are going to be the bolts that bolt the base here. Well, to that frame there, the, the lower base. Okay. Looks like they left some nails in here for me. Whoever was building up the crate. Looking good. I believe these are going to be the uh, the uh, lifting locations right here. These holes, the stand right here. This is going to be the mist lubrication right there. All right, time to get her off the skid. right here this uh, two by is actually broken so this is the only damage I've seen so far not to the machine but to the crate I guess we got pretty lucky this thing didn't break right here and the saw fall through the skid all right we're ready to get this thing off the crate we got our lag bolts off the base there another little uh, good look at it out here in the uh, out in the natural light I believe I'm going to pick it up with the pallet jack and I'm going to take my chainsaw and cut off this little side here to kind of make a little extra room to get in there. So you might want to notice right here, we've got our nice USA flag on the frame. This is our tag. It does say made in USA. So this model saw, DM10, some of the components for this is actually manufactured in Italy. 
and then they are brought in to the U.S. and sent to the Con their Conway plant there in uh, Conway, Arkansas, and then they build the saw there in Arkansas. They've got several of them there that they build in Conway, and then they're based out of Canada. I believe it's Woodstock, Canada, is where Hydemech is at, and they have a lot. Of, a lot of their large saws are made in their uh, Canadian plant there. So just wanted to point that out. that I have enough height here with the uh, overhead and I've got four equal length straps hooked up to the uh, the pipe there this one in the back corner I'm gonna have to make sure that I get the skid out and then bring the uh, stand in here underneath it and hopefully we got just enough height to be able to set it down over it. I didn't have enough room to be able to roll it in there with the pallet jack I just I don't have enough height with the uh, straps the way they are so I think I'm going to set it down just like that and then uh, see about getting it up afterwards onto the pallet jack. got four bolts that uh, bolt the saw down to the base just had to that was a little tricky getting it lined up there but we finally got it I had to use my uh, little saw blow and just do some light bumping around to get it to get these holes to line up every time you move the chain it wanted to twist one way or the other and not and lose the alignment that I had on it like you gotta go that way just a touch we got it <laughs> and then here here's your uh, coolant sump so we've got all of our other parts and our books and all of our literature everything's in here I was just gonna get this uh, bolted down and then pull this out and get to our uh, our other stuff
We got the saw sitting safely on four by fours in all the corners right there. I'm gonna see if in, in our, our material packing right here, we actually have feet that goes under there. So this is the uh, sump, I pulled the cover out. That's for our, uh, that's gonna be for the mist coolant right there. And then this looks like the, uh, the owner's manual, operator's and maintenance manual right there. Quali quality inspection certificate on DM10. Got the voltage and the date on there, 11 13 20. So last month. Some more parts for the saw, it looks like. We got some hard parts. This is probably going to be a, a stop that goes on the other side. This is the, uh, that's some mist coolant right there for the mist. Must be some tools. Look at that, yep. We even have some tools that go along with the saw. I don't know what this is, so I'm going to go to the table and figure it out. Alright, let's see what our other parts here are for the saw so that we can finish our assembly. Like I said, I think this is going to be a uh, stop for this side over here, a workpiece stop. Looks like that's exactly what that is. That's the workpiece stop right there. Oh, okay, this is going to be a stand for the other side of the saw, the back side. And it uh, looks like a roller. Yep. So we got a roller there that's going to mount to the, uh, the other side of the saw there for uh, feeding material in. All right. I'll go ahead and start getting this stuff mounted on there as well. And a tray. i got to just figure out where all this stuff goes. I've got the manual here, so everything, I'll know where everything's supposed to go. All right, we almost have the saw uh, ready to go. I've got the, the little roller stand bolted on there. I'm going to show you that. A couple other things that I wanted to point out there as well. So here is the, the owner's manual and the operator's manual. This is a really nice printout. It's real easy to read. They got some color photos in there and illustrations uh, about the entire saw. So I'm going to be going through this book so that I get familiar with the saw and how everything operates and functions on this saw right there, okay? We've got our uh, mist coolant stuff right there. I need to check that out because we're going to have to hook that in there as well. That's right there on the bottom, all right? Uh, we got our warranty information there. This was a, a printout on the proper way to lift it, which you saw me do exactly how they got it right there with the pipe and then four straps. All right, so here's our, uh, we got our stop mounted in there. Okay, you can, you can loosen this guy up, you know, and of course slide it wherever you need to for, um, you know, production sawing. If you got a bunch of parts that are the same length you can put that wherever you need to okay now this tray right here I'm not exactly sure where this is supposed to go right off hand but I do know that it'll fit right up there on the edge of the saw maybe it's used as a drip tray uh, I'm not sure yet so we're just gonna you know that can come and go as it needs to all right we got another inspection tag right there signed on November the 13th all right and we'll go over more of this saw in the uh, next video once we get this thing hooked up and going this is your uh, switch right here this is how you activate it and of course pick it up i still got to cut the band off here haven't done that yet all right so here's the uh, the roller frame that i showed you that was sitting right here we got it mounted on we got the roller right there and then this bar right there as well bolts in there and so all this will have to be adjusted to the uh, the, the base of the vice right there okay I'll get all this cleaned out, get it vacuumed out. This is where our, all of our coolant's gonna go. So it did not come with the feet there. So I'm gonna see about ordering some machinery feet to um, you know, mount onto, onto the base there. But we're just about ready.
All right, guys. Well, we got the saw assembled and it's uh, ready to go. Next next phase is getting it installed. But I still have a lot of work ahead of me on the other side of the shop where the old saw is. I got to get it moved out of the way. I got to do some cleaning up over there, and I probably got to move some other things out of the way in order to get this saw moved back there. Okay. I still got to go and get the uh, correct wire so that I can run the circuit. I'm going to run one across the ceiling, and it's going to wire directly into the uh, machine right there. I've got a I've got a connection there on the wall that we already installed. I showed that before. I'm going to use one of those breaker boxes there, and then we'll have a wire running across and uh, going into the saw right here. All right, so I'm going to bring you guys back for another segment. Once we get to that point, I'll show you getting it installed back there. And then once we do get it installed and hooked up, then we will fire this thing up and use it for the first time. I'll go over the, uh, you know, the operation of this thing, how it runs, how we use it. We'll show it mitering, which is, you know, the angle that we can, we can turn this thing. Um, it's 60 degrees one way, 45 the other way that's why they call it a double mitering bandsaw so it makes cutting angles extremely efficient on this uh, type of saw right here okay we've still got to look into getting our um, coolant you know our mist coolant hooked up there as well but uh, that's about it for now okay i'll bring you guys back once we get to the next segment where we get it back there and get it installed all right so we just recently completed the tie rod job for rare parts we had the 180 tie rods that we uh, chased the threads in the ends and this was the actual tap that we used to do that job this was a brand new tap whenever i started using it one that i had in my stock actually i believe one of my viewers actually gave me this tap some time back because i had uh, at one point i had received a bunch of uh, larger of the uh, 12 pitch taps that somebody had donated here to the shop so anyway what i wanted to do is actually show you the tap in the in its current condition after doing the uh, 180 uh you know thread chasing through the through all the tie rods there so let's take a look at the flutes there try to get in there and uh, show you what the cutting edge looks like now you can see if you kind of focus right around that area right there you can kind of see a little shiny dot right on the end of the threads there and you can see that's the actual wear in the tap okay but it's not it's not worn like some people are expecting it to be worn. This is still cutting, still doing the job, but it could definitely use a, uh, a touch up. You can see right there, see what looks like the little shiny dots. That's the actual wear. That's the part that's doing most of the cutting whenever the tap goes down into the thread. So uh, still in good shape, still can uh, do some work there. But yeah, I would like to actually send this over to one of the grind shops and get them to uh, touch up these cutting flutes here and get it back razor sharp again and uh, ready for the next job there. But anyway, I just wanted to share that because I had a lot of I had a lot of people asking about that, about the wear on the tap. So you can see firsthand what it looks like after running it through 180 tie rods.
So we've made an upgrade to the uh, cameras for the uh, for the shop here, and of course a camera that I'll be using anytime I'm out outdoors doing some filming. So what we have here, this is the new uh, model GoPro, which is the Hero 9 Black Edition right here. And I've also got it installed in the, what they call the media mod, which is, this is an extra case here that the camera itself is slipped into. And what the media mod does, this is the first time I've used the media mod that came out with this last year for the Hero 8. What it does is that it incorporates uh, in a shotgun mic into the housing there. And this is just a, a windscreen and you can actually take this off right here, take that off and I'll show you what I mean. So there's the actual shotgun mic. So you have a, you actually have a front mic and a rear mic right there, or you can use the mics on the uh, camera itself and not use one of those. So like I said, this is just a uh, windscreen that goes on there. And this is what they call their mini Zeus, which is an LED light, which is gonna help out a lot. And you have three settings. We'll go ahead and turn it on. There's the low, there's medium. And then there's high right there. You can see and it does pretty good. Now this is just a diffuser that you can take off. Hold the button down to turn the light off right there. And you can kind of see what it looks like. So excellent for lower light conditions or anytime you just need to add a little extra light. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, a great little setup for a vlogging videos. Anybody that does uh, you know vlog style, style videos. So what I've done is made my own personal modification and that's this little thumb screw right here. And the reason why I wanted to make one is because with the media mod, when you use the original screw and that's what they give you is an original style screw, it's up underneath the housing there and it's actually pretty hard to get your fingers in there to tighten it up. So I made one myself. I'll go ahead and take this thing out so that you can see what it, what it looks like. Try not to drop the camera off the hand, the, uh, yeah, the handle there. So there's the uh, one I just made. Let me show you why we got the camera on there. What this looks like with the original style thumb screw. I mean, you can get it on there. It's just, it's just a little bit harder to get your fingers in there to tighten it up. See what I mean? So I just wanted to go ahead and make make my own and that's what I did right here. This is uh, made out of a piece of stainless uh, prop shaft material is what it is. So it is mag magnetic, but I shouldn't have any issues with it rusting on me. The uh, screw size on the end is uh, actually a number 10 screw. So it's a 1032 thread. And I forget what the length, I think I made it a total of uh, inch and a half long right here. Uh, Turned this to 7 16 diameter, and then I did the undercut down to 5 16 right there. The OD right here, 7 8 diameter, and then I used a uh, half inch carbide end mill to come in there and cut these little slots out right there, just to kind of mimic the uh, the original style. I thought about doing some knurling in there, but I just decided to go against it. It really doesn't matter. These, these little grooves in there give you a good amount of uh, hold to be able to spin this in there. And then I just used a ball mill on the end just to kind of reduce some weight because I originally didn't undercut that and I didn't put that in there, but just trying to reduce the weight a little bit. It's not anything um, super heavy, but it does add a few extra ounces of weight to the uh, whole camera setup here. So we're gonna take this guy back out and uh, put the, the new screw back in there. You see what I mean? It's just hard to get your fingers in there. So I'm assuming they're, they were trying to cut down on their total cost and having to make new screws to supply, but I think that it was what they should have done. But since I got a lathe and a mill, I can very easily make my own little screw that works for me just the way that I want. See, just like that. It works out pretty good. So we're gonna be using this for a lot of our filming now, and I'm probably gonna go ahead and invest in a second one to start using for my all my regular shots that you know my camera mount that i have set up in the noga and one of the things let me show you this let me take this back off so they went ahead and added uh the usb ports back here see so you got your usb c uh, port right there this is an hdmi which is i don't really ever use that but you can plug that into a tv if you want and then they finally added an actual mic jack right there a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack port 
So I can mount this in my other camera setup where I use my Rode shotgun mic and have it plugged directly into the case and not have to worry about that expensive adapter that you have to use, which is what I'm using now. Got a big old cord adapter that the uh, mic plugs into and then plugs into the camera. So it eliminates one less thing. So anyway, we're gonna be using this um, on a lot of our videos coming up there. And I just wanted to show this little modification that I made.